Mark chapter 2, we're going to read verses 23 through 28, the last verses of the chapter. I hope that you find this message, this passage as thrilling as I did and do. At first glance, you might say, well, what's thrilling about this? By the time we get through with this message, your heart ought to be thrilled if you're a child of God. And if you're not, you ought to know and see how that you need to come to Jesus Christ, and then your heart will certainly be thrilled. When you found your place, will you stand with me? Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 23. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. The Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? He said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he had need and was an hungered? He and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abthar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Let's pray. Dear Father, we, we bow before you. We thank you, God, for your goodness. We do thank you uh, for the picture of the Sabbath in the Old Testament and the New Testament Sabbath of rest that we have in Jesus Christ. Help us to see that beautiful picture today. Thrill our hearts, God, by your word. And Father, I pray that anyone here or anyone that hears on social media that know not Jesus, that they be pricked in their heart unto salvation, that you draw them unto Christ and uh, that, they, that they accept him, Lord, as their personal Savior. We give you praise and thanks and honor and glory in all that you do. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Over and over in this chapter, or not only in this chapter, but specifically in this chapter, Jesus has offended the Pharisees, the religious Jews. He has not broken the law of the Lord now. He has only violated their traditions, their traditions of men. They're upset with Jesus because he refuses to do things the way they say to do them. If you look back in verses 15 and 16, they're upset with Jesus because he had the audacity to sit down to a meal in a sinner's house. Aren't you glad that Jesus comes to old sinners? I know I am. I'm glad that he loves old sinners. I'm glad that he'll spend time with us, that he'll save us and change us. Then in verse 18, they're upset with Jesus um, because he didn't follow their rituals and rules the way that um, they said they should be followed with fasting and those things. And then here in um, 23 and 24, we find the Pharisees upset again. It seems to me that their primary purpose in life was to be upset. They're always upset. Their primary goal, they had made themselves judge and jury over everybody else. And so they were always upset. I want to tell you something. The meanest people in the world are the people with religion without relationship. They have all the rules and they have all the rituals and they have no relationship with Christ. They're hard people to deal with. The Pharisees fall into that category. Every time we see them, they're criticizing something. The Pharisees are upset in this case because the disciples of Jesus are eating corn in a field on the Sabbath day. Now the word corn simply means grain. It was probably wheat. As they passed through the wheat field, they reached out and, and gathered some of the heads and rolled them in their hand and ate the grain as they walked through the field. Now, 
The law of Moses gave clear instructions concerning this matter. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 24 and 25 says, When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes thy fill at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in a vessel. In other words, they can eat while they walk through, but they can't carry anything out with them. Verse 25, When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. So they were perfectly within the law of the Lord to pick the grain as they walked, eat it as they walked. They couldn't carry anything, couldn't put it in their pockets and carry it out with them. But they were doing exactly according to the law. They were well within their rights to eat as they walked. So why were the Pharisees so uptight about it? Why were they so upset? Because they dared to do this on the Sabbath day. The Pharisees came to Jesus and attacked him because his men were picking grain and eating it on the Sabbath day. They accused the disciples of doing something unlawful on the Sabbath. So the question arises, was what the disciples were doing an unlawful activity? Did picking grain and eating it break the law? Well, let's answer that question. In Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do, not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Hmm. Nothing there that broke the law. Turn over to Leviticus. Leviticus 23 and verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Well... Hadn't broken any laws there. Turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 12. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thine ox, nor thine ass, nor any <clears throat> of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Well. Wow. There's all the teachings. They hadn't broken any of the laws. The answer is no. They did not violate the law. They simply plucked as they went. They didn't take the day and, and you know, harvest the weed or anything like that. The law was very clear in what it prohibited on the Sabbath day. The people were not allowed to do work on the Sabbath day. The work had to do with their business the making of money, the making of profit. And so they were not allowed to do that. The disciples were not working. They were simply meeting a pressing need. They were hungry as they walked, and the law gave them provision to pluck the grain with their hand as they walked and eat it as they passed through the field. Here's the problem. The Pharisees were not judging these men according to the law of Moses, according to the law of God. They were judging them according to the traditions and teachings of men. The disciples had not violated God's law. They had violated the traditions of men. And the Pharisees were upset about it. 
For hundreds of years, the scribes, the Pharisees and others, had added regulation on top of regulation that went far beyond the teaching of scriptures. That's what religion does. Remember this. Religion is man's attempt to make himself right in the sight of God. God has made provision that we can be right in his sight. It's through the shed blood of his son Jesus Christ. By grace through faith are you saved. But man wants to do something his way, doesn't he? That's what religion is. And so they had added all these rules. They had taken a day that had been given to man as a blessing and had made it a burden unto man. I noted just a few. Just let me rehearse a few of them. A Jew could not carry an object that weighed more than a dried fig. However, they could carry an object twice that weighed half, the, half as much as a dried fig. You see what I'm talking about? They had just added regulation after regulation. They would made the day a burden. A fire could not be lit or extinguished on the Sabbath. If you failed to trim your lamps before the Sabbath, you had to sit in darkness till the next evening. A woman could not look into a looking glass on the Sabbath because she might be tempted to pluck out a gray hair and that would be, you know, harvested. If a Jew was injured on the Sabbath, it was unlawful to make him better. You could take necessary steps to preserve life or to, you know, to save life, but you couldn't do anything to make him better. That was considered. Listen, it was ridiculous. That's the whole point here. The regulations and rules that they had added that God never placed on this day. The lesson for us is this. We must be very careful that the traditions of men do not come to have the same authority as the Word of God. The Bible is God's final authority. The Bible is God's Word. And that's the Word we need. It's the only standard for our faith and practice. It does not matter what you've been taught. It does not matter what you believe. It does not matter what your favorite preacher said. All that matters is what the Bible says. When we stand before the Lord, we'll not be judged by the words of our favorite preacher or what we've been taught or what we believed or our opinion. We'll be judged by the Word of God. The Bible said that we have one that judges us. The very words that I have spoken, Jesus said, John 12, 48. Now, when His men were attacked, Jesus does not enter into an argument with the Pharisees, Jesus did what we should do when people want to argue religion with us. He pointed them to the Word of God. He pointed them to the truth. <laughs> I may say some things that some of you disagree with. That's fine. Before you attack me over it, you go to your Bible, and when you come to me, you have books chapter, and verse. Then we have a basis to begin a discussion. But if you don't have book, chapter, and verse, don't even bring it to me because I'm not interested in your opinion. Got that? Just like I don't believe you ought to be interested in my opinion. What we're interested in is the Word of God. That's what we're called on to teach. That's what we live by and found our faith upon. Jesus did not argue. He merely pointed them to the Word. He says, have you not read? Exactly, he said, have you never read? Have you never read? Seemed to me like he used a little bit of sarcasm there. He's trying to get them to understand that their argument was not based on a proper understanding of what the Bible says teaches about the matter. Their argument was based on their opinion, and he didn't care about their opinion. I've heard men preach about all kinds of foolishness that did not have one bit of scriptural support, and that's sad. But it's just as sad to me when I've heard that stuff preached and somebody or multiple people in the audience will holler, Amen. We ought to know the word enough to recognize falsehood when we hear it. 
We ought to study ourselves to show ourselves approved unto God. That we know the word, know the truth of the word, and can recognize opinion when it's brought to us. Jesus proceeds to remind them of an incident that occurred during the life of David when he was fleeing from Saul. He and his men needed food. They had a need. David and his men come to the priest and ask for food. The priest tells David that there's nothing there except the showbread. The showbread was 12 loaves of bread that were baked fresh every Sabbath day. These 12 loaves were placed on the table in the holy place in the tabernacle. The 12 loaves represented the 12 tribes of Israel. They reminded Israel of the Lord's presence among them and their dependence upon Him for their physical needs. The showbread was changed every Sabbath day and the old bread was to be eaten by the priests. This bread was not to be eaten by non-priests according to the law. But it was given to David and his men because of the necessity. The clear teaching here is that there are times when human needs are more important than legalistic ceremony. The last two verses give us some insight on this topic that I'm trying to get to because I believe our hearts ought to be thrilled by it. Verse 27 and 28. He said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Jesus tells these men and us that the Sabbath day was given for man's benefit, was given to be a blessing. The Sabbath does not exist to be served. It exists to serve Man, to help man. The Sabbath was first observed by God in Genesis 2, 1 through 3. When the Lord had finished the work of creation, He ceased from His work. He did not rest because He was tired. He rested because He was finished. You starting to get excited? What did Jesus say on the cross just before He released His Spirit? It is finished! We're about to get to something good. We're about to get to the New Testament Sabbath. And what the Old Testament Sabbath showed us or was a shadow of in the New Testament. The Sabbath was given to man out of the grace of God. God gave man one day in seven in which he didn't have to work for a living. Man was to take that one day every week and rest from his labors. Man was to use that day in reflection upon God and the blessings of God over the past six days and give God worship and give God praise and thankfulness for His goodness. That was the original intent of the Sabbath. By the time Jesus came into the world, the Jews had perverted the day and so regulated it that it was not a day of rest. It was a day of burden. It was a hardship. The Sabbath was no longer refreshment. It had become endless rules, regulations, and burdens. While we're on the subject, this would be a good time to get a clear understanding of what it is and what it isn't. This is also a good time to clear up some questions and misunderstandings that swirl around the Sabbath day and its observance. So, <clears throat> the Sabbath day was given as a shadow of Jesus Christ. It pictures the rest that we have in a relationship with Him. Remember, God rested because He was finished. Jesus Christ is finished. He finished redemption's plan. He finished salvation's plan. He finished it for us. There's no more that we have to do. No more that we need to do. There's no more to be done. He did it all. And placing our faith and our trust in Him, we can rest. We can rest in Him. That's what the Sabbath was a picture of. Turn to Colossians. Colossians um, chapter 2. <clears throat> I 
I got a chapter 2 in my Bible. Colossians 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. So these holy days and Sabbath days were a shadow of things to come. Jesus is that which it uh, foreshadowed. The rest of the Sabbath, we have rest eternal in Jesus Christ. When the real thing has come, there's no need for the shadow, right? Listen, if, you, if, if you've been separated from a loved one, it could be a child, a spouse, a parent, whoever it is, you've been separated for a long time from a loved one. And they, and they fly in or they come in and you go to meet them and the sun is behind them and it's casting a long shadow towards you. Are you going to fall down on that shadow and try to embrace it? and try? No, the real thing's standing right there. You're going to hug them. You're going to love them. You're going to embrace them. You're going to kiss whatever. The real thing. That's what Christ is. The Sabbath was the shadow. The real thing's Jesus Christ. Don't fall on the shadow anymore. Fall on Christ. Embrace Him. He's got outstretched arms to embrace you. There's no reason for the shadow now. Those who are saved have entered into the Lord's rest. Hebrews 4. We are not laboring to be accepted of the Lord. We are accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1, 6. Every day is a Sabbath day of rest in our souls. We have rest in Jesus Christ. We're not laboring to get saved. We're not laboring. No, He did it. We're Believing, trusting, secure in Him, He is our rest. The Sabbath was a sign to Israel of the uh, uh, covenant. We are not Israel, and the Sabbath was never for us. Christians, did you know, are never commanded to keep the Sabbath? Not in the Gospels. Look for it. Not in the Epistles. You look for it. Nowhere in the New Testament is the requirement of the Sabbath reiterated. The only one of the Ten Commandments is not reiterated in the New Testament. Why? Because all the commandments were taken, the Old Testament Ten Commandments, were taken to a new height and a new level in the New Testament. The Old Testament said don't kill. The New Testament said don't hate. Right? The Old Testament said don't commit adultery. The New Testament said don't lust. Take it to a new height. Well, think about it. The Old Testament said keep the Sabbath. The New Testament says Jesus is your Sabbath. Rest in Him. Glory to God. We all be getting excited in here. When the church was formed, the early church, Church of Acts, they met on the first day of the week to commemorate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Now, Christians do not observe the Sabbath, and Sunday is not the New Testament Sabbath. We've already established that fact. The New Testament Sabbath is rest in Jesus Christ. In fact, Paul rebuked the Galatians for forcing people to observe certain days. You read it in Galatians 4. We've already read Colossians 2. The New Testament Sabbath is the rest that we have in Christ, and it is finished. Jesus sums up all this by telling the Pharisees that He is Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, it's far more important to know Him through a personal relationship, to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, than it is to have rules and regulations of Religion, you see the difference? And why relationship is more important. Rules and rituals cannot save the soul, Jesus can. You can keep the Sabbath, 
and still die and go to hell. But if you know Jesus as your Savior, you're destined for heaven, whether you keep the Sabbath or not. Here's how the Bible says it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, plus nothing, minus nothing, and thou shalt be saved, Acts 16, 31. Now let me clarify things just a little bit before we leave. I think Sunday is a very special day. I believe Sunday is the best day of the week. It's the first day of the week. It's the best day of the week. We ought to give God our best, right? We ought to give Him the first of what we have, not the leftovers. So Sunday being the first day of the week, we ought to give Him that day. It's a day when the church gathers to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. It's a day set aside to honor Him. It should be the most special day of the week for the Christian. It's a day for us to come together and worship our God and Savior, to thank Him, and to encourage one another. Sunday's a special day. But it's a day of thankfulness. It's a day of renewal. It's a day of regeneration. It's a day of it's not a day of burden. It shouldn't be a burden anyway to come to the house of God. To get recharged for the coming week. We, we sing praises. We lift up His name. Well, I believe we can bless God by that. But we also pray for one another and we hear from His Word. This ought to recharge us. It's like sometimes when you phone runs down it has to be recharged. Well, by Saturday, we can get run down. And we need to be recharged. That's what it's all about. Honoring Him, worshiping Him, praising Him, and being recharged. It shouldn't be a burden. It should be a delight. So I'm asking you today in closing, do you know Jesus? Do you have Him as your personal Savior? Do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? You see, if all you have is religion... You're burdened down. You're burdened down, and by all your rules and rituals and regulations, you're burdening everybody else around you now. Frankly, you're just hard to get along with. Always criticizing about something. But if you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, if your trust, your faith is in Him, you're free. You're free. You're, you, you have liberty. You're free to enjoy God. You're free to enjoy being His child. You're free to enjoy His blessings. You're free to enjoy your friends and one another and not be always critical. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? <clears throat> Will you bow with me, dear Father? We, we bow before you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, this holy day. We thank you, God, for this wonderful opportunity to meet with your people. To find the encouragement, God, that we need to face another week. To find the instructions in your word that we need to go out and face another week. To get plugged in and recharged. We thank you, God, for relationship. That we have rest in Jesus Christ. We're not burdened by rituals and regulations, but we are free to enjoy relationship because Jesus did it all. There's nothing that we need to labor and add to it. We have the New Testament rest in Jesus. Father, I just ask you that you thrill every heart here. Every saved person here would leave here thrilled by what we've learned from your word or been reminded of. And Father, for anyone that knows not Jesus, I pray that this is the day. That this day they come to, come to you asking forgiveness and come to Jesus of, uh, uh, in trust and faith and salvation. We ask that you be honored and uplifted and and uh, your church be edified, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me?